This is the homework for 527, 528, and 529B. In 527, to ride to school, Elaine takes seven minutes to ride 17 blocks. So we want to sub set it up as a ratio. Blocks over time. The, ind the dependent over the independent. 18 blocks for seven minutes. And that is approximately two and 5,700 blocks per minute. So that's the unit rate. Assuming she rides at a constant speed, how long should it take her to go 50 blocks? Well, I set it up as a proportion. We have 18 blocks in seven minutes, so how long would it take for her to go 50 blocks? So it's important that um, you have the numerators representing blocks and the denominators representing time. And that's why it's really important to label uh, blocks and time. Now we just cross multiply and you get 18 multiplied by x is 18x. 7 multiplied by 50 is 350. Inverse property of multiplication is division. Created the giant one. What you do to one side, you do to the other. And 350 divided by 18. And so you have x equals 19 and 4 tenths repeating. And that repeating bar means that 4 will continue on forever. So it would take about 19 and 4 tenths minutes for her to ride 50 blocks. In problem 528, Gail and Leslie are riding in a friendly 60 mile bike race that started at noon. The graph represents their progress so far. Part A asks, what does the intersection of the two lines represent? Well, here's the point of intersection where the two lines meet or cross. And at this point, Leslie and Gail are at the, at the same time at the same distance. In part B, it asks, approximately what time did Leslie pass Gail? So if we have go down here, it is approximately 2 p.m. that Leslie and Gail um, are at the same place, and that's when she passes her. In part C, about how far had Leslie traveled when she passed Gail? Well, Here's the point of intersection, and we go to distance, and you can see that's approximately 18 miles. In part D, what do you think happened to Gail between 1.30 and 3? Well, from 1.30 to 3, so in this section right here, you can see that Gail is not going any further away from the starting point. She's, if she were to go up, she's going further distance. If she were to go down, she's going cl closer to the starting point. But she's going horizontally, and that represents that she's not going anywhere. But it's still going horizontally because time does not stop. And in that point, if she's not going anywhere, maybe she got a flat tire, she stopped to rest. There could be numerous reasons why she's not going anywhere. If Leslie continues at a steady pace, when will she complete the race? Well, if I take a straight edge, and remember it's a 60 mile race, so if I go to 60 miles and I take my straight edge and I continue it up to 
60 miles where they intersect. If I come down here, let's do that again. 60 miles is gonna be about right here. And I come down and it's somewhere maybe around 620, 630, maybe even 640 or 650, but anywhere around there because it's just an approximate. For 529B, you need to write an equation or rule for the XY tables and then graph each rule. So if you look at the table, you want to find the rate of change. And I can take any two of these ordered pairs and find the rate of, cha the, the rate of change. So I just took these two. And from 2 to 52, it's going up by 50. And the x's from 0 to 10 is going up by 10. So if you think of rate of change or slope, the y's are going up by 50 over the x's, which is going up by 10. So the, the slope or rate of change is 5, or you can write it as 5 over 1. And if we were to graph that, we need to find the y-intercept. That's when x equals 0. And that y-intercept is found where the line crosses the y-axis and it crosses the y-axis at 2. So, 1, 2. There's our y-intercept. And so to graph that, we know that it has a slope or a rate of change of 5 over 1. So we can take the equation, y equals mx plus b. So the m is the rate of change or slope, 5 over 1. Now write it 5 over 1. That'll help you graph it. And B, the y-intercept, this is 2, positive 2. So from there, our starting point, we can go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over positive 1. But you could also do negative 5 over negative 1, because negative 5 divided by negative 1 is still 5. So we could do the slope as negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over negative 1. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over negative 1. And now that we have three points, um, I went ahead and graphed that line.